actually. So that's about 17 so far. Right, we got 17. Mike is an extreme minimalist. Uh, the wardrobe section, <laughs> she can see. I have something for all occasions. Oh, yes, he right. only has about so 50 have, uh, things to his name. Sweater. Underwear. Underwear. Yeah. Two pair. Two pair, right? And then we go to our next drawer here, which is our shorts. Got it. So like when I'm doing laundry on laundry day, I'll wear these. This is it right That's here. That's incredible. That's it. Two pair. Two pair. Two pair. All right, folks. So welcome back. Mary Walter rejoins us here. And also joining us are... The Minimalists. Uh, I don't know if they're as extreme as that gentleman with two pair of underwear, and I don't know if I really want to know, to be honest with you. Uh, but they're here in studio, Joshua Milburn, and um, also Ryan Nicodemus, and they are the authors of a uh, new book, Everything That Remains. And uh, gentlemen, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, so your childhood friends, you were both 20-something, very successful, had it all, yeah. and for some God-unknown reason, uh, you decide to uh, to turn in this direction and become minimalist. First of all, what is your definition of minimalist? Is it like that guy uh, that we just saw? No, I think they're all different flavors of, of minimalism. I think it goes all over the spectrum. In fact, that was when I was first exposed to minimalism. Uh, for me, I noticed that there were all these different people. There were guys like that who were single or people who traveled all over the world and owned just a few things in a backpack. But then I saw some more traditional family families and people with full-time jobs and cars and houses in the suburbs and it was really about getting the excess stuff out of the way clearing the clutter from our lives to make room for what's truly important yeah, see, now guys, I think this is brilliant because you are right in time to market this as a guide to surviving the Obama economy because <laughs> none of us are going to have anything anymore. Um, I do not find it strange that it's all guys who are living minimalist lives because there's no way as a woman I can survive with two pairs of underwear. <laughs> so is this just for the guys or is there some way as you actually expect women to do this? No, no. Like, like Josh <laughs> said, there are male and female uh, minimalists. There are uh, people on on all sides, on, on, on all uh, areas of the spectrum. Uh, there's a gal named Courtney Carver. Um, she actually has this uh, uh, project that she does. It's called Project 333. And what it does is it helps women to really uh, use their clothes and jewelry deliberately. All right, but, but you know, with all due respect, um, and, and I believe Mary's exactly right. I mean, there are more and more people, notwithstanding the uh, encouraging unemployment numbers that came out today or jobs numbers, they're not encouraging at all uh, when you look at uh, the people who have left the workforce and where we're headed in this country. And more and more people are going to be forced into becoming minimalists if they even know what they're doing or not. Having said that, you're minimalist, but you're going to make a ton of money off this book. And maybe you're giving it all away to charity. I don't know. And you may not have worldly possessions or as many, but if you were as wildly successful as you, you know, were, said you were, then and you got, did you give all your money away too, or is that in investments and in the bank? And is, ju is it just, does money count as material things, or is that separate? You know, I'm certainly not allergic to money. <laughs> and and I, I think it's important to note that yeah, the the point is, you know, I grew up really poor, and I thought the reason we were discontented is because we didn't have much money. And then I climbed the corporate ladder throughout my 20s and became really successful, had a six-figure career, big house, and all the trappings of success. And that stuff didn't make me happy either. And what I realized was, money or no, it's really about the decisions that we make in our lives, and money can help accentuate that. So now instead of buying bigger houses and fancier cars, we're able to invest in people, we're able to help charities, we're, help, we're able to do a lot of things with intention as opposed to just spending money for the sake of trying to buy right, happiness. But, you, but, but, but you, still, you still believe in the American dream, though. I mean, uh, not as redefined by Obama, uh, where everybody should have a good job and a nice house, but the real American dream. I mean, aim for the sky, Make as much as you can, and then do what makes you happy. I mean, is that are you consistent? You both of you guys with that uh, definition? Yeah. Uh, no. What I would say, I would kind of reverse that. I would flip that. I would say, do what makes you happy. And if you can make a bunch of money from that, great. But really, what our message is, is saying that you can be happy now. You don't have to make a million dollars. You don't have to have a six-figure job. All you have to do is pursue things that you're passionate about, do things that align with your values and beliefs, and, and don't work yourself to death. You don't have to do that to be happy. Yeah, so you're talking about just redefining our idea of success. Because mm -hmm. our idea of success in this country has been traditionally tied to climbing the ladder, making it, you know, doing better than the neighbors keeping up with the Joneses, that kind of thing. So what you're basically talking about is just redefining what makes us happy. Yeah, I think success you know, for me for a long time was about paychecks and stuff. 
And again, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think, don't think there's anything wrong with working a nine to five and working really hard. I think we all have to pay the bills and we all need some stuff. The point is, I don't put that first anymore. I don't define success by that. Right. Now success is, am I happy? Am I growing? And am I contributing? Right, well, what does that have to do then with the underwear? Like, I mean, was that was that report? I know that wasn't you guys that she was talking about. No, no, seriously. But is that uh, is that an exploit? of minimalist in your view? I mean, a misrepresentation? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if it's a misrepresentation. I would say that that is uh, that gentleman's version of minimalism, and, and that makes him happy, and that's great. And, and that's really what minimalism does, is it helps you to figure out what does make you happy. For me, um, I did this crazy thing called a packing party to really figure out uh, what I was using in my life. I literally packed up everything on my 2,000 square foot condo, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and even had two living rooms. I have no idea why a single guy would ever need two living rooms, uh, but I packed everything everything up as if I were moving, and then I unpacked things day by day as I needed it, and I did that for three weeks. And at the end of that experiment, I had about 80% of my stuff still left in boxes. And all those things I, I donated, I sold, and that's really where the minimalists.com started was with that packing party story. But I do wanna you know, make things clear that minimalism has never been about deprivation. It's never been about how many uh, possessions can I uh, whittle down to, um, uh, for not, at least not for us. Some people take it that route, and that's great, and if that makes them happy, perfect. Well, gentlemen, uh, you've helped uh, educate us on uh, minimalism, or uh, as minimalists in the book, Everything That Remains. Uh, check it out. Uh, Joshua Milburn and uh, Ryan uh, Nicodemus. And we wish you a lot of luck on the rest of the tour. Thanks Thank so you. much. All right, guys. And when uh, Mary and I come back, Kendall Coffey, the one and only, will go spinning the law right here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Don't go away. In 